Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's the end of the month, so we're going to be sharing five more tips to make your modeling in FreeCAD that little bit more easier. These tips you may or may not know, and what I'm trying to do is every month release a video like this to help with your learning and progression with FreeCAD. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at these tips for April. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. If we have a number of edges to select in a model, then we have to select the edges from the screen staying like this. So we have to control select each of those edges. There is an easier way to select these if we haven't got the tools in something like 0.22, and that's utilizing the path workbench. If we come over to the path workbench, there is a tool in here that can be used. It's this one here, finish selection loop. So if I take this edge, this one here, and use a tool, it will select all the edges along the top face. But if I select two edges, this one and this one, and use a tool, then it will select the edges that create a loop from the edges that are selected. So in all workbenches, we have this toolbar at the top. So we go to something like the draft workbench, you'll see this toolbar still stays here with some standard tools on here. So let's say we come into the part, it still stays there. We can add tools to this toolbar, so the tools are available on all workbenches. To do that, we have to go up to the tools and customize, come over to the toolbars, and we want to drop this one down and come up to global. Now if we use the search and search for something like move, which is part of the draft workbench tools, click on that. So we've got that one there. Let's add a new toolbar. And I'm gonna call this draft. You can add as many tools to this as you want. And we're just going to move that over to there. Let's add some others. So for instance, let's use the rotate. So let's come in here and let's rotate and move that one over. It doesn't remove from the draft workbench, we just create another toolbar. So we've added that in there. Let's close that. Now if I come up to the toolbar and right click, you can see no draft selection is on that. So if we right click, even if we're on an icon, we get to all the toolbars that we can add in. Let's come over to the start workbench. So going to the start workbench, straight away, these tools become active. Now if I right click, you see we have the draft icon there. So changing workbenches allows those to come active. So now when I go onto any of the workbenches, say for instance, part, we can see down here, we have those tools. The same on say the sketcher, they're here. Part design, those are still there. They can be moved. For instance, we can pull this up to here and come over to the part and you can see them sitting there. Now these tools can be used on any of those workbenches. To remove them, just hover over one, right click, and we can uncheck the draft. And if we want them back, we just right click and put them back in. To remove them completely, first come in, uncheck, tools, customize, or we can right click and come down to customize. Toolbars, come over to the global, and we have the draft one in there. 
we can remove items from here if we wanted to, or we can select the draft and hit delete and hit close. If I right click now, we still see the draft is available, but the minute I change to a different workbench, this just refreshes it. Right click, you can see the draft has gone now. If I have a number of objects and I will say changing this cube's height or width by coming in and changing the height, I say 50, and I wanted to do the same with this one, then if I was using the same value across those, so 50, I don't have to do those separate. I can select one and control select the other and set both the heights to say 30 or 20. So we can see that. And you can affect both of those at the same time. This is the same across multiple objects that use the same property or share the same property. For instance, if I take all of these objects, these three here, and come into the View tab, then I can change the color of all of them at once, like so. Also remember, if you're changing these and you don't want it to do any maths, say X 15.4 millimeters, and you wanted to add, say, five more millimeters on this, then we can just use the plus five or even the divide by two, the times by seven, etc. When we're sketching and we're adding dimensions, so we add a dimension across here, we're working in millimeters at the moment. So anything we added in here, say 30 millimeters, will be in millimeters. If we want to move in and out of the different units, say working from millimeters to inches or millimeters to feet, etc., then we can do so without changing the dimensions by coming down to the bottom here and setting them on one of these scales here. What we can do is just select, say, this side, use a height in here, and I can go and place in three and then type in inches and that will add the three inches in here in millimeters. If I change this to US, you can see the three inches in there and the millimeters in there. Let's say we had a more complex object like this one. I selected it and created the cross sections. And then I can say number of sections, let's say 10, and add them on both sides like so. If I hit OK, we create the cross sections through here. If I hide the loft, you see we have cross sections all marked out with this single object, which is a compound. So this is a compound because we've got separate parts that sit in here. You can see that by coming out to part, coming down to check geometry and run the geometry checks. In the shape content, we see that it is in fact a compound. Close that, click on loft CS, and then come up to part and using the compound tools to explode it, we get the individual parts in here, which we can then take, say, over in the draft workbench and flatten. Go to the draft workbench, so that's in all those individual parts. Looking from the top, so straight on. Modifications, shape 2D view. We get all of those individual parts, as you see them there. Let's hide this lot. Press the space bar on top level, and we get the individual sections. Which you can see we can move about on the screen. And I'll put these as, say, a 2D plan. So that's my tips for April. I look forward to seeing you in the next month where I'll be releasing more tutorial videos for FreeCAD. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. 
I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.